What I know about prostitution, I know from the prostituted women that I work for, representing them because they asked me to. We have found the sanctimoniousness and the superiority of the moral position against prostituted people, that is, that they are bad, to be insulting and insufferable. And we have also found the rescue impulse to be demeaning and typically ineffective. But no one opposes the normal business of prostitution for money, that is, of sex for money, more or more eloquently than the women who really know what it is because they're living it. That is, the women who are living in this industry, most of whom are trafficked by international definition because they are being pimped and they want to get out and they can't, thus fitting the international definition of slavery. When you want to get out of marriage, there's a term called divorce. 85% of women when asked what they most want, that is women in prostitution, say what they want is to get out, but they don't know how to. Usually they got in as children. Normally, they got in as children, the majority. They were, most of them, sexually abused, actually, even before that. This is in the 90% plus range. That is, they were treated as a thing for sex before they ever had a chance to become a person first. And usually, they are women, meaning their economic options are limited already by sex discrimination precluding a vast majority of what men do for better pay, leaving the, for the women who end up in prostitution, the one remaining thing to be called her choice. This is a myth that one woman described for herself as, to be able to get out, I had to believe I chose to get in. Sex, when it's right, like friendship, is its own reward. It's mutual. It's equal in its diversity. You can't buy the real thing. In prostitution, women have sex with men they would never otherwise have sex with. The money thus acts as a form of force, not as a measure of consent. It acts like physical force does in rape. And as Kathleen Barry put it, the only difference between rape and prostitution is time. One ends, the other doesn't. And then she is stigmatized and deprived of dignity by society and criminalized by the legal system. So for her, what's wrong with it is, it's abusive, it's intimately violative, it's destructive, it's damaging, it's dangerous, it's exploitive, and it's unequal. It's up to you to decide if this is right or wrong. We're not here actually to discuss the proposition it's wrong to be paid for sex. We are here to discuss the proposition it is wrong to pay for sex. I've just been talking about what's wrong with it for her. What's wrong with it for him is he's using her. He's exploiting her. He's exploiting his inequality to her, which is usually a desperate economic inequality. In order to have access to her person in a form of bodily invasion, while he gets off on the illusion that she has chosen this freely when he is taking more than can ever be paid for. And what he is buying is not only that chunk of her humanity called self-respect, and it isn't sex only. It's you do what I say, sex. Now, to be against this is why those of us who are today supporting this proposition support the Swedish model. In this model, the seller 
is, well, the buyer is strongly criminalized. The seller has, is al also strongly criminalized. The, in criminalizing the person who is the one who's buying the sex, you are criminalizing the one that my desperately poor Indian clients from India call the real criminal. And you decriminalize the sold. You couple this with real education, real employment opportunities, real jobs, real money. Women are entitled to real equality and real choices. Men presumably also need to pay for household expenses to put themselves through school. And you don't find them in general, not in anything like the numbers you find women selling themselves on street corners. Women need real equality and real choices. We're asking you to vote yes for this proposition as a way to weigh in on the side of the view that women and children are not for sale. going to reserve the balance of my time for my rebuttal. We'll remember that.